So like that could be the intro. And then Within the pantheon of the Negroni cocktail, there are some very famous names. There's the uh, Kingston Negroni, Boulevardier, Left Hand, Bianco Negroni, or well, it would be Negroni Bianco if you're conjugating correctly. Uh, but there is one cocktail called the Cardinal, which is a fantastic drink, little known, and doesn't get enough respect in the Negroni world. So today we're gonna be making the Cardinal cocktail. It is a cocktail that is an Italian creation and a classic, and it has two different versions, so today you're getting a twofer. So I've got my two glasses here. I'm gonna be, put this guy aside. We're gonna be building straight into the glass. Usually I would have this thing chilled, but today, since we're building in the glass, I want you guys to see what's going on, what the color of the cocktail is. We're gonna use an unchilled glass. Not to mention the fact that 90% of the bars you go into are not gonna chill their glass for like an old fashioned or a Negroni if they're building it directly into the glass. Okay, so first things first, it's gonna be very easy, very simple cocktail. Half an ounce of Moselle wine, one third Campari, and then one ounce of gin. So it's really your decision what kind of gin you wanna use. I'm using London Dry because I think it's gonna go well in this. That's not to say that other citrus forward gins won't work. They will. Something that's a little bit more savory is gonna give it a little bit different of a flavor, just so you know. All right, and then we're gonna just take our big piece of ice and Stir. Yeah, and although we made a tiny cocktail inside this big glass, you know, the selection of glass really has to do with how big your ice is gonna be and what you want the presentation to look like. And then we're gonna take an orange. We're gonna cut a nice long swath of orange peel here. And we're going to zest it over the top like so, like you would a Negroni. Then, bear with me here, hook some holes into this like so. Grab some cloves. I'm gonna stud this bad boy. Like an advent calendar? Like an advent calendar, that's what we, that's what I learned this Christmas. Just like an advent calendar. And then we're just gonna place that in there like so. Let's taste it. Yeah, gives a little bit more sweetness than you would have with dry vermouth, although dry vermouth is pretty sweet. It has this residual bitterness from the Campari that works really well with the wine. Obviously you get the notes of gin. Um, that clove studded orange peel is really great the orange oils. It's really, it's just like a really nice, lighter version of a Negroni. And I gotta say, it probably is my wine choice. So the use of wine, which is a Moselle that comes from the Moselle Valley in Germany, kind of makes this drink more about the wine than the other, other ingredients, but it does have a, a kind of balance to it. I will say though, that it has some balance, but it's a little off balance and it's a little off balance in favor of that wine. I'm gonna be interested to see what this tastes like with the uh, kind of more modern approach, which is going to switch out the wine for dry vermouth. So we're gonna put this guy aside and make the next one. You guys know how this is gonna go. We're gonna do one ounce of gin, one ounce of Campari, and one ounce of dry vermouth. Drop our ice in. See how the volume just works better in this drink? It's a little, little fuller, you get that nice space because you want that space. You don't want the level of the cocktail to be up here and you don't want the ice to come above the rim of the glass because you don't want anything touching your nose when you drink because that is the most unpleasant experience when drinking. And again, like a, a more normal Negroni, the, the modern ones that I have seen of this drink don't actually clove stud, they're orange. So you can, I'm sure it'll work fine but we're just gonna do the original, original just kind of like Negroni peel that we normally do here. Yeah, this is, this is a better drink than with the Moselle because the vermouth is so much more complex in flavor profile than the wine. The wine is sort of a one note thing. It kind of has a little bit of dryness and a little, and, and a little bit more sweetness. This actually has those botanicals that are playing into the botanicals of the gin. And so it gives you a more complex kind of feel. Uh, it's really nice. It's nice in color. I like the, the addition of more Campari, which makes it a little bit more red, a little bit more vibrant. Um, so for me, this is the Cardinal that, that wins between these two. But I like them both pretty well. But this one is the one that wins. And you don't have to go find Moselle wine. There it is, the Cardinal. 
When, what I like about just Negronis in general is that you get the full flavor of the Campari, but you taste all of the other elements, the gin and the, and the dry vermouth first, and then the Campari is sort of a back note and you have residual bitterness in the back of your palate, which I, I like. That is something that is acquired. It's not something, well, some people like it, but for the most part, that's an acquired taste, that, that bitterness in the back palate. So this cocktail was created by an Italian bartender named Giovanni Raimundo in 1950 at the Excelsior Hotel in Rome, Italy. And it was originally created because there was, a, at the time, a cardinal that was coming to have an audience with Pope Pius XII during the Jubilee. Do you know what the Jubilee is? I did not know what this was. I, I have heard of it, but I have. Uh... So the church will dub specific years the Jubilee, and it is the celebration that they do to receive blessings and pardon from God. So it was during this Jubilee that this particular cardinal was going to have his audience, and the uh, bartender decided that he wanted to create a drink that was kind of modeled on a Negroni and would mimic the hue of the cardinal's robes. And so that's where this drink comes from. So there it is, guys. Ba -ba 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 -ba, the Cardinal. Yeah, I was just using it as a as a way to talk about presentation, but I don't really need to. I guess it's just like me saying too much. I'm gonna do that again. I feel like this is gonna be a massive glass for this particular drink because it is, I'm just looking at the specs right now and it's like, like a two ounce drink and this is a 15 ounce glass but uh we're gonna commit to it i think anyway is there anything else that i need to say um i guess not no. yeah. okay i'm gonna grab my piece of ice i cut this nice faceted piece of ice specifically for this drink. I'm gonna let it sit here and uh, temper a little bit because when you put very cold ice into a cocktail, it cracks and we don't want this beautiful piece of ice to crack. Okay, so I got my two. Well, actually, I don't, I don't wanna say that. Uh, I gotta do, you gotta cut out that cheers. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I don't know, I actually don't know where they've been living because there were those, uh, there were those na Native Americans that lived basically in the side of mountains and they created houses out of the fucking mountainside. It's basically a cave. It's like a, it's like a more engineered cave, but it's a, yeah, that's, that's, a, it's a cave, that's a cave. Yeah, the Anasazi. And we have some B-roll of it right here because I went to Anza Borrego. Right, so those, right that's a, those are cavemen. Uh, uh, yeah, they are cavemen. <laughs> no, nope, they are cavemen. Okay. They are cavemen. All right. They just engineered a better cave. And canceled. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean canceled?